In this video, we're going to look more at the standard reaction Gibbs energy and see how we can calculate that from the Gibbs energy of formation of our chemical species within our reaction. So the reaction that we're going to use is our favorite reaction throughout this series on chemical equilibrium, which is uh, nu A moles of A plus nu B moles of B. So stoichiometric coefficients are nu's and the chemical species are each capital letter. So those are our reactants, and then that goes to our products of nu C moles of C and nu D moles of D. So our standard Gibbs energy of reaction, which is delta RG naught, as we've defined previously, is equal to minus RT, gas constant times temperature, times natural log of our equilibrium constant. So our equilibrium constant can be expressed in terms of different types of quantities, in terms of pressure or concentration, as we've seen. But that doesn't really help us out too much because unless we already know what this equilibrium constant is, that doesn't help us know what our Gibbs energy of reaction is, and vice versa. So we want an alternative way to get our Gibbs energy of reaction so we know what our equilibrium constant is and how far our reaction will extend in one direction or the other towards products or reactants. So alternatively, we can express our standard Gibbs energy of reaction in terms of some other quantities because we know that G, the Gibbs energy, is equal to enthalpy minus temperature times entropy, G equals H minus TS. So our delta RG naught is equal to the standard enthalpy change of reaction minus temperature times the standard entropy change of reaction. So if we have tables of our entropy change, if we can figure out what our entropy enthalpy change of reaction, excuse me, if we can figure out what our enthalpy change of reaction is and what our entropy change of reaction is, then we can figure out what our Gibbs energy change of reaction is. But that also isn't very helpful unless we can figure out what both of these values are. So what we're going to do is the same thing we use to figure out what our uh, standard enthalpy and standard entropy of reaction are, is we're going to look at the Gibbs energy of formation. <clears throat> so know that our Gibbs energy of formation is equal to the enthalpy of formation minus temperature times entropy of formation, <coughs> standard for all of those in all of those cases. And what we can use then is, since we have tables of values of the standard enthalpy of formation and standard entropy of formation, we can then construct tables of the standard Gibbs energy of formation, and from that we can calculate our standard Gibbs energy of reaction. So in terms of the Gibbs energy of formation for our reaction that we have up here, what does our Gibbs energy of standard Gibbs energy of reaction become? Well, that is going to become uh, each stoichiometric coefficient times the standard molar Gibbs energy of formation of that product. So <clears throat> product C, new moles of it, of, and the Gibbs energy of formation of C, plus our other product being positive, new D moles produced of that. So it's standard Gibbs energy of formation of D minus we consume new A moles of reactant A, so we lose its standard Gibbs energy of formation, minus new B moles of the standard Gibbs energy of formation of B. <clears throat> so as we see here, if we know what the standard Gibbs energy of formation is for each reactant and product, we can calculate our standard Gibbs uh, energy of reaction, and thus we can calculate our equilibrium constant, and we can calculate what extent of reaction we will have in one direction or the other. Okay, and <clears throat> as I said, these values of standard Gibbs energy of formation, not of reaction, of formation, let me draw a better delta there as well, we have tables 
in which these values are compiled such that we can look them up. Just as we saw for calculating uh, standard entropy of reaction and standard enthalpy of reaction, we look up these values that are compiled in tables and it makes it nice and convenient for us to calculate the result. So one more um, abstract thing that I'll write over here as we did for enthalpy and entropy just to clarify it before we do a specific example here. So we have sum over the products which I denote by indices J of their stoichiometric coefficient of standard Gibbs energy of formation of each product J minus sum over reactants which I have denoted by the index I of each of their stoichiometric coefficients times their standard Gibbs energy of formation of species I. So products minus reactants just as we've seen for enthalpy just as we've seen for entropy. That's the beauty of state functions and how they are both uh, additive and independent of path. Okay, so let's uh, look at a specific reaction that we looked at for some examples for some other cases when we looked at enthalpy and entropy. So we were looking at the combustion of glucose specifically, which is C6H12O6 solid plus six moles of O2 gas going to six moles of H2O gas plus six moles of CO2 gas, if I can get that on the page, not quite. Okay, that gas is gonna go below there. Okay, plus six moles of water gas plus six moles of carbon dioxide gas. So our standard Gibbs energy of formation for all of these compounds is going to be delta F G naught chemical species I'm going to have minus 910.52 this area in units of kilojoules per mole 910.52 minus 910.52 for glucose C6H12O6 in the solid phase um, 0 for O2 it's going to be minus 394 Point three nine for CO two, and it is going to be minus two twenty eight point five eight for water. Okay, so to calculate our standard Gibbs energy of reaction for the combustion of glucose, um, we just have to follow the formula that we have detailed here. So delta R G naught is just going to equal. We're going to have, let's do the products first, six times minus 228.58 for water. All of these units are gonna be in kilojoules per mole, so I will omit that for now. Plus six moles of CO2, minus 394.39 kilojoules per mole. Minus, because it's a reactant, glucose, one mole of that times minus 910 0.52, and also a reactant 6 moles of O2, which is 0, because that is already in a standard state, so it's that you don't move anything going from standard state to standard state. So that means that we get our final results, if you plug these into a calculator, of our standard Gibbs energy of reaction for the combustion of glucose using these values, gives you 28 27.4 kilojoules per mole. So this is a highly, highly, highly favorable reaction, as you can see by the standard Gibbs energy being very, very negative. So under standard conditions, this is a very, very favorable reaction where all of these are at concentrations of one molar or of one bar of pressure. So that means that as we, as we see, whenever combustion has the initial energy to get started, it is a very, very favorable process. It happens very quickly. It releases a lot of heat, produces a lot of entropy, and thus the Gibbs energy of reaction, uh, of standard energy of reaction under those standard conditions is very, very, very favorable.